Hi everybody, this is Zad, and I am here with Gliza today. Hello, Gliza. Hi. Good morning, I guess. It's good morning right now. <laughs> good morning when we're recording this. Yes. Good time zone. <laughs> what better time is there to record a romantic little side story than in the morning, relatively early? This is a little something that uh, that Gliza and I have been meaning to do for quite some time, and we're glad that we finally have the chance to do it. And hopefully y'all have been enjoying Windward and Kyle as much as we have. It's a pairing that is always going to be very precious to us. Yeah. So, I had originally pitched this, and Brianna was into it, and Gliza was into it, and here we go. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. So here's the story of Windward and Kyle. It is a romance in three parts. The first game that we're going to be playing is Romancing the Stranger. It is a mini game in the says a tavern simulation role playing game for three plus players by Takuma Okada. Lovely little game, and I think at least a lovely little way to start. So. Romancing the stranger, someone in the tavern makes eye contact with you, and their gaze lingers a little longer than you'd expect. Your co-workers urge you on, and make every excuse they can to send you over to talk to the lovely stranger. One pair plays. Set up. The romancer. Describe a detail about the stranger that drew you to them. Backing up just a smidge. So in Stewpot... Everybody will already have defined roles and uh, little bits and bobs here and there. In this case, whereas Stewpot is a bunch of former adventurers running a tavern, in this case it is obviously Windward Pudge, purveyor of the junk drawer, and the other employees, I guess, would be just Laron. <laughs> <laughs> because this takes place a fair amount of time before the season of Tempest Multi. How long do you think it is going to be before the season proper starts, Glyze? Well, Kyle is new, so I want to say maybe a month. A month? Yeah. I've always been picturing their relationship being longer than this. Mm. Right? Like, by the time Multi starts? Probably. We could do, like, five months, maybe? Five months? Yeah, I like that. So it's five months before the current season starts. How long have you been working for George at this point? Probably around the same time, maybe like three or four months. Uh, just because gotcha. one of the first people that Kyle meets is George. You would say that you move to town about nine months before the story begins. You meet George around that time. Did you move here for George, or did you just... Did you meet him? I moved here for my best friend, Hess. Ah, right. So you and Hess met, and you... This is something that I, I don't... How did we meet? It's a very interesting story. Yeah. We were friends for a long yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Just like internet friends, or... Something like that, but uh, Hess was the only one of the very, very, very few people who knew about Kyle's secret of, like, falling asleep and, you know, just absolutely mm -hmm. taking people's legs and has known this for a while. And mm -hmm. he had reached out to Hess when they were trying to find, like, a place to hide because uh, he had remembered mm -hmm. that Hess has this uh, has been living in this small town and was wondering if he could move there and that's when, that's when, that's when Kyle moved there. With no knowledge that you had recently killed some of Millie's friends, right? Yes. And no knowledge that Millie was also there. That kind of thing. Right. Why would it come up, right? Yeah. Like, like I don't even know that, you know, that that person lived there. So, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, and how, like, I, I would imagine that Hess had told you about some of the work that you did at the theater, but, like... Names. There are vampires all over the place. Yeah. Millie, notoriously poor taste in men. <laughs> and, you know, 
the guys that you took out, fuck them. Exactly. Excellent. So, you've been living in town for about four or five months now. Mm-hmm. And you've decided to come into Junk Drawer. What's, what is bringing you into Junk Drawer today? I think now that he's been more confident after working a little bit with George into exploring. Kyle isn't really the most outgoing person. And for the first few Mm -hmm. months, all he's been doing is really just visiting Hess and doing stuff for George and then sleeping. That's basically all Kyle's been doing. But ever since he had started becoming more comfortable working with George, he decided to explore the city a bit more, the little the little uh, town a bit more, and decided to look around. And uh, the junk drawer was just something that he's been really curious about for a while and wanted to check that out. Okay, so you're just coming in to, to take a look, window shopping, but on the inside sort of deal. Not looking for anything specific, just kind of here. Yeah. This is um this was one of those things that was just like junk drawer. Interesting name. Let's see if everything inside is actually just junk. Have you been around the night market at Oak Ridge Mall? Also the better and more affectionately known as uh the Weird Mart before, or is this your first time in the mall? This is the first time in the mall. Okay. This is really pretty early on in Kyle's exploring stage. Gotcha. Okay. So you go ahead and walk in. Coming past Big Dog Fitness, which... Sorry, I'm trying to think of some sort of weird workout class that he... That Corrigan would be running right now. Spin class. Pilates. Pilates, but how do we make it... Weird. How do you make Pilates magic, though? Yeah. Um... Pilates with puppies? (laughs) Pilates with puppies is actually great. Yeah. Oh, God. There's, like, dogs running around. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's, like, it's the sort of thing... So, Corrigan's a bit of a meathead. He's a a, a werewolf that is sort of, like, Corrigan-ish in appearance when he transforms. (laughs) But just, like, a beefy dude with these really short limbs... Always looks like he's smiling. Usually is just smiling. Love Corgan. And he's the kind of guy who would probably just like, wants to have an exercise class that moms can come to with their kids, that like parents can come to with their kids. And his thought process isn't like, okay, well, how do we incorporate the children into this Pilates class? It is, what do we do to keep the kids busy? And it's puppies. So Pilates and puppies is what's going on as you walk past, (laughs) as you walk past Corgan's. I think Nuke City Games is is just dead. Queenie's in there. God, I think like Devin's reading like a, a fourth edition D and D book and taking notes, working on whatever project he works on. He has his lunch from the Carcosa Kitchen, mm-hmm. which is a place that you should not eat at. Anybody who catches the name reference there would know that that is a. That place is probably bad news. <laughs> but he's got his soup from Carcosa Kitchen sitting there. And yeah, you just... Next door, there's the drunk drawer. And there is Windward, leaning against the counter, looking at... It is bound like it is a grimoire. But on the inside, it's it's like a modern, slick catalog of stuff. Of various magical accoutrements. It's the fantasy equivalent of the Sharper Image catalog, just bound in leather and magically updates itself whenever you get on a plane. Sharper Energy catalog. <laughs> it's Sky Malt, fuck. And I think Leron is floofed out entirely, just completely stretched out, taking up like half of the counter. And his head picks up as soon as you walk in and then Theron stands and gives a bit of a shake gives one of those enormous rabbit yawns so you can see his huge teeth and then just sort of lumbers down the stairs that they've got set up 
or that that windward has set up so that Laron can be up on the off on the counter and disappears back into the stacks and there's windward I think at this point we can tell it's a bit before like Tempest multi starts because their hair is grown out and short on the sides but like a bit longer in the front and styled so that it goes up and off to the side of high fashion butch lesbian haircut mm. so that is the romancer describe a detail about the stranger that drew you to them what's kyle's body language how are they walking when they come in when kyle walks into the junk drawer it's trying to not take up that much space sort of like a quietly entering thing if he could enter that place without drawing any attention that's what he would do and so he enters in and he's wearing just jeans and a t-shirt you know with the binder on and the first thing that he sees would be you know Laurent just like this huge rabbit uh, and I don't think <laughs> yeah. Kyle has ever seen a rabbit that big and in no. his mind he's like that's a really big rabbit but also like I wonder if that rabbit could eat me kind of thing uh, and it's just that is the first thing that he sees and is just mesmerized by this rabbit, stares at it. And when Laurent just sort of stands up and moves to leave, that's when he noticed Winward, not Wardy yet to Kyle, cause you know, <laughs> not yet. he doesn't know her name yet, but the same mesmerized feeling that he had had for Laurent, but like a hundred times more is now capturing him when he looks at Wardy as Wardy is reading this leather bound book yeah so set up romancer that's me describe a detail about the stranger that drew you to them I think when Windward looks up and they've got those very small round glasses on just to keep up appearances with the dark shades. They lean the book back down onto the counter and he just looks over the glasses at Kyle. And I think there's a mismatch about Kyle that is creating this delicious tension to them. They've come in making themselves small and subtle, but inside, when you really look at Kyle, when you look into them, I think it's impossible to not understand that there is a deep and abiding need to know and to experience, to take in, to understand. And that's been hampered, that's been contained, that's been, in a lot of ways, beaten into submission by life. In the ways that has brought Kyle here. But the glowing embers of that need, that don't have enough oxygen to truly spark to life, still live in the way that Kyle looks at Laron, thinking, I didn't know that rabbits could get that big. And I think that that's the first thing that is going to draw Windward to Kyle. So, as the stranger, currently giving you this appraising look through a pair of very small round glasses, describe the first thing you notice about the romancer. It's definitely the eyes. Do you see Winward's true eyes? These these spectacles, they keep people from noticing that Windward doesn't have usual eyes, that they are in auroros of flame or color of some sort, and the glasses generally prevent that. Do you see Windward's actual eyes? 
Yeah, let's say that he does. What color are they? Green. Green? Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And Kyle sees these gorgeous pair of eyes and he can't help but stare at it. And he doesn't know what to do. And he just continues looking at her. And he feels himself falling deeper and deeper. And he doesn't know how to explain it. You're allowed to come in, you know. Right, right, of course. Um, I was just looking around. Uh, I've never been here. Well, welcome. It's permitted to look. Anything in particular that you're looking for that I could help you find? In his mind, Kyle thinks of thoughts that he refuses to say out loud because it's improper and impolite and just says, what is it that you're reading? Oh, (laughs) this is, well, I do promise that I've got uh, things that are of a uh, a higher quality than these sorts of uh, trinkets. This is this is the uh, the Libris Acrius Imaginum, sort of a tawdry thing for people in my profession. But you know, uh, nice to see what what sort of uh, what sorts of amusements people have cooked up for themselves. Would you would you care to would you care to peruse? I can place any of these things on order as a as a business owner. I can get it for you at a good price. Yeah, um, I, I, and at this point, Kyle would walk closer and would be like, uh, yeah, actually, I would like to look at the, that book and look through it with you and see if there's anything that would interest me coming off of those pages. Uh, yes, yes, of course. And yeah, so this is how we then can get into the game. You walk up to the counter and Winward takes the I did in fact translate sharper image into <laughs> into Latin. So that's that one. I am good at dumb bits. <laughs> so next part of the game. Getting to know each other. Take turns asking questions. Each player should ask two. And as Windward turns the book so that you can both look at it and leans against the counter. I think his arm sets next to yours. I don't think they quite touch. They almost touch, but not quite. They almost touch, right. And you know how, like, static makes the hair on your arm stick up? Yeah. It's close enough that our arm hair is reaching for each other has come into contact yeah they're reaching out between the two of us so you've got the little image here that you can look at do you want to go first do you want me to go first uh you can go first okay (laughs) as we are reviewing this uh reviewing this catalog i compliment you and you think I'm making fun of you, but I am completely in earnest. What am I complimenting you on? My height. Okay, how would I compliment your height? Kyle is obviously shorter than you. Yeah. He's like, what, 5'4? Yep. And Winward's like 6'2. Winward's very tall, very broad. As you're, as you're like, kind of having to be up on tiptoes a little bit. Windward says, you're a precious little thing, and I uh, wouldn't want that any other way, but perhaps it would be a little easier than if uh, I've got a stool around here, if you would like. I really like my height. You know? Yeah. It's 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 a nice, good height. And uh, where I come from, mm-hmm. it's the tall end of average. But yes, I, I would appreciate that stool because, you know, 
standing on tiptoes can be uncomfortable for a while, but that doesn't mean that I am short at all. I, I'm tall end of average, obviously. Oh, 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 I, um, <laughs> you said that this is from where you come from? Uh, yes, from, from where I come from. Uh, it is the tall end of average. Hmm, I may have to, uh, I may have to, uh, to make a journey out there and peruse. Please, here, uh, no, you are, and, uh, she, like, lifts up a stool kind of from one side and sets it over to the other side and takes your hand to help you into it, or, or at least, like, tries to, sets the stool behind you and goes to see if you need, like, an extra support to get up, uh, and says, no, quite on the contrary, I think that this is... And that is an in-character pause, that long moment, as she looks you up and down. Uh, no, no, this, your height is, uh, quite adequate. Thank you. Uh, oh, well. Uh, what am I even thanking you for? Uh, Please. Uh, no, 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 I should thank you. Uh, thank you for making my life a little bit easier, and, uh, Kyle does sort of, like, try to look... I don't know how he would do it, but he would try to look as cool as possible getting up on this stool. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to be like, anyway, and just sort of like move a little bit closer that our, our arms sort of like brush against each other. And Kyle is well aware of that, but doesn't say anything. Your turn to ask a question. I name a place you remember visiting. What experience have we shared? Ooh. What place do you mention? Let's say I tell you where I've come from. We were talking about, like, where I was from and all of that. And I mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah, let's say the Philippines. That's where I mentioned. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, where I come from, I am tall end of average. And I mentioned that it's in the Philippines. Because you said that you wanted to go there to peruse, and I say, well, it's in the Philippines, so, you know, if you want to go visit, it, it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. I do miss it a lot. You are from the Philippines. I have never yes. been. I guess, like, what sort of stuff would even be... It's an island place. So, a lot of beaches and all of that. It has a lot of different cultures mixed around it because of how big mm -hmm. the country is and how and yet each part of it is you can consider it like a big island so every every filipino has gone through like this whole like oh let's go to the beach kind of thing or you know there's cities and all that so maybe you went to the beach there one time i am going to put some, some spin on this <laughs> so <laughs> Feel free to nix this if it's going to be a little too intense, but the Philippines was colonized originally by the Spanish, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. For 350 years. Yeah. So, when we're... Have you been to Cebu? Is there a good beach there? Is that still, like, a place that people go visit? Mm -hmm. It's one of the... Uh, okay. It's one of the famous places people like to go to, yeah. I have been there. <laughs> Right. Windward immediately when uh says says, Oh yes, the Philippines. I have actually uh I have in fact been visited quite some time ago. Lovely people when we when we were there. Uh the, the beach uh the beaches outside of Cebu were were just stunning with the the landscape around there was, was simply marvelous when I visited. And it cuts to a memory of Windward making landfall with a number of Spanish soldiers. And Windward's one of the first people off the boat and is standing on the beach and looking at this. To this point, just, uh, is it, like, what sort of uh, vegetation is it? Is it, like, jungle, like, palm trees? What sort of plant life would have been there? I think it would have been jungle at that time, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, just like looks at the jungle and turns around and, and like a long shot of like just uninterrupted beach and sea and then 
just creeping into frame from the left is the Spanish ship. And then it turns a little further and there's the boat that's that's carrying these Spanish soldiers. And then another figure also wearing kind of dark coverings over his eyes comes up behind Windward and sets a hand on his shoulder and says, well, there's work to be done. And Windward bows his head and says, yes, of course, Master, let's begin the work that we've come here to do. And that's the memory, is what it looked like before. Lovely place, Cebu. I do hope to get back there someday. Yeah. Cebu's beautiful. I was there as a child as well, and uh, quite busy, quite nice. Much better than Manila. Still a big city now. I do love the beaches there. They're, they're quite. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lovely place. I have to step away for a moment. Uh, but I look across the room at you. Do our eyes meet? Or do you look for me after I look away? I think as we have that and like something in the catalog catches your eye, Windward says, if you'll excuse me for a moment, could I get you something to drink? Uh, yeah. Do you have Diet Coke? <laughs> Windward gets kind of a, a little bit of a panicked look for a second and then says... You know I will see what we have. I'll see what we have next door. And Windward sort of disappears into the back room that connects over to Nuke City Games. Goes over to the staff fridge that, like, Queenie and Devin keep there and pops it open and there's a can of Diet Pepsi. And... Windward takes like a $5 bill out of their pocket and leaves it in the fridge along with a a brief note that says apologies will replace and takes it get comes back and says uh my 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 sincerest apologies is Pepsi okay it's perfectly fine yeah she sets it on the on the counter and then goes to sort of their own little back office area but where they've got this this very strange I think what they've got right now is it's a bamboo plant that has kind of a tap at the bottom because like you know you just like keep bamboo filled up and that's just kind of how bamboo does and Windward has to take a minute and and study themselves tries to look normal you can see them through the window of the office yeah as they pour into a, not a clear glass, but something something else, because there's dirt in this water, but Windward's weird like that. So, Windward pours this glass of bamboo water and goes to take a drink and glances back through the window. Do our eyes meet, or do you look for me after I look away? Um, our eyes would definitely meet. Kyle has been watching you this entire time. And he has this small smile on his face as he watches you. In his head, he keeps saying, it's impolite to stare. But he can't help it. Winward is one of the most beautiful people he's ever seen, and he can't stop staring. God, the duality here. Winward's like, this sucks. I am complicit in the colonization (laughs) of their home and meanwhile Kyle's over there like god <laughs> god she's pretty <laughs> I love this for it's us great. it's it's the best uh, thing this is perfect yeah when we're gets their drink and comes back and it's your turn to ask a question Ooh. let's say I trip and fall against you you catch me and what do you say let's say that as you're coming back, Kyle isn't very careful, and because he's on the stool, somehow this stool, the way he's leaning over, becomes unstable, and he 
sort of starts to wobble and fall. And you are quick to catch him. What do you say? Windward catches you. And I think our eyes lock again. And Windward's glasses have slipped in the sudden movement to catch you. And our eyes meet. And Windward sort of smiles and says, Well, I would prefer you don't fall on my account. But if you're going to fall for me, you should at least tell me your name first. Kyle reaches up and gingerly pushes your glasses back up where they were and says Kyle you have such pretty eyes thank you my name is Windward and you have pretty eyes yourself and even though the glasses are in place and covering Windward's eyes you can see that they aren't the full green that they had been before there's that green light reflects back off of the glasses because you can see them and dancing within the green is some shades of violet some lavender and some purple it's a pleasure to meet you kyle the pleasure is all mine and kyle doesn't make a move to straighten himself at all and feels like it lasts forever. I think at that point, somebody else walks in, another customer comes in, and almost before you realize it, you don't remember being set back on the stool or or being set back upright, but before you really think again, you are there with the catalog and Windward is gone assisting another customer Kyle sits and um, turning the pages is just he isn't even reading this book he's just turning the pages and when he reaches the end he goes back to the very beginning and turns the pages again The way his face looks, it's hard to tell if he's even thinking of anything, but there is a small smile on his face, and he stays there. Closing time. The tavern or the shop is empty. The tables are being wiped down. Basically, Windward is doing a little bit of sweeping up. You both get up from the table you've been sitting at, talking, and wondering where the time has gone. You've been sitting at the counter, absentmindedly flipping through this. Windward's been going about his day and chatting with you this whole time. Three hours have passed before we noticed. So, for the romancer, for me, we're about to close up shop for the evening. Do you say something before the stranger leaves for the night? Queenie has pulled the... uh, the metal cage that goes in front of of shops in malls. She's pulled it over her half of Nuke City Games. I don't think that there's anything going on tonight. Like, they just don't have a game scheduled there tonight, so she's actually going home. But she pulls it over and is like, "Uh, hey, is it... I mean, do you want me to to lock up? Et cetera, et cetera. And Windward says to, to Queenie, yes, I'll... Just be a moment. And looks to Kyle and says, Well, you know, you do re- feel rather like you fit the place. Are you perhaps looking for work? At this point, Kyle goes, Dinner. Do you have a... Um, um, Do you have it? No, that's a stupid question. Would you like dinner with um, me? Windward is completely on the back foot with this. 
and has to take a moment to to uh, get recomposed. While Windward is doing that, Kyle is panicking and says, you know, you were about to offer me work and I was wondering if we could talk about it over dinner if you wanted to, uh, because it seems like you're closing and it would be really nice to have more time to talk about it. Of course. Um, well, uh, well, unfortunately, I do have I do have previous arrangements for the evening. This isn't true. Windward just doesn't want their weird food things to, to turn Kyle off and needs to make a plan. But Windward says, just like finally manages to snap the, the mask back in place and says, I do apologize, but I have previous arrangements for the evening. But perhaps you could come in tomorrow and we could discuss it then. Yeah. Kyle has made up his mind that he will be coming every day. <laughs> Wonderful. Say, if you were to come perhaps around 11 o'clock, I can have lunch prepared for us. That sounds wonderful. I'll be here at 11. Okay. Wonderful. I look forward to seeing you. And Windward reaches a hand out to shake yours. And Kyle reaches his hand as well. Holds on to uh, Windward's hand for a bit longer than he usually does. Mm -hmm. Windward's grip is definitive and firm and they bring their other hand up to cup the back of yours as you shake hands. And Windward says, uh, well, Kyle, it's been a genuine pleasure to meet you. And I look forward to getting to know you better. Nothing would give me more pleasure than and it takes all of his effort to let go and turn around and walk to the front of the door. But before he leaves, he looks at Windward one more time and smiles. I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, it was really nice meeting you. It was... A delight and a pleasure to meet you as well. So, will you come back to the shop tomorrow? Or at least someday? As I mentioned earlier, Kyle is coming there every single day. Every dang day. Every dang day. Whether he gets tired or not, Kyle is going <gasps> to be there. Rain or shine, uh, he is going to be there. Uh, Laurent is going to be annoyed with Kyle's presence and mm -hmm. is just going to be there every single day. You know, that it's a... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think once you finally walk away, Windward sort of collapses into the stool, like sits in the, on the stool and against the bar, or against the, um, the counter, and like Laron comes up and sits next to him and... Uh, gives him a look, and I actually do have the question here. Who is the first person that you tell about this? Windward reaches over and begins scratching Laron behind the ears and says, Laron, my dear friend, I fear that I may have started a spot of trouble. Tempest Multi is a production of Pseudonym Social, changing reality one story at a time. It is an actual play podcast using Urban Shadows 2E Quick Start Guide, and it's set once again in the town of Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I am your keeper and producer. Hello, everyone. It's Casey again. I'll be playing Cass Pravda, the Oracle Playbook. My name is Zadkiel, or just Zad. In this game, I am going to be playing Windward Pudge, and they are using the Imp Playbook. Hi there, I'm Maria Perry. I'm playing Millie Elza, your local vampy vampire. I am Blaze, and I'll be playing Jason Madison Coleman, 
the aware. Sup, y'all? I'm Fennec Foxfire. I will be playing Hess, playing from the Book of the Wizard. Hi, I'm Gliza. I will be playing Kyle of the Tainted Playbook. I am Ava Rogers. I will be playing Angel Day, the Sworn. To get more information on this or any of our other shows, check out our website at pseudonymsocial.com.